let's look at some of the facts here. You know, the Republicans are running a whole bunch of candidates for governor here in Colorado, and uh, the Democrats are running eight candidates too, but the media hasn't talked about, you know, uh, over half of them at all, and we've barely heard anything about it. And the reason why this is important is because instead of actually fighting amongst each other, uh, we liberals need to, you know, unify even the bourgeoisie uh, Hillary bots, but... For right now, I'm trying to organize a core of supporters. November 6, 2018, this is the date when 33 Senate seats are up for re-election. 33 Senate seats. So we have 100 senators, and a third of them, their seats are up for re-election. In the House of Representatives, House election, all the seats are up for grabs. All 435 seats are up for grabs next year. So that na 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 Scott Tipton, I don't know. I feel like I should just throw my name into the mix just to, you know, put my voice out there. But it's most of western Colorado, so that's like what? The rich people, right? <laughs> in Pueblo. The rich people in Pueblo in southern Colorado. So there's still some, you know, poor rural folks I think that I would appeal to. Now, four 35 seats in the House of Representatives are up, 33 Senate seats are up, and that's in, the, in Washington, D.C., 14 governorships are also up for re-election. So, that's here in Colorado. The governor's up for re-election next year, November 2018. So, there's, you know, Republicans, there's Democrats. I heard there's six unaffiliated candidates. So, I think it's independents and that's Greens. And electorally, I think the, electorally, the most powerful way to, you know, for an independent to actually, you know, expand their vote. I'm a Green Party, I'm registered Green Party right now, and I'm, actually I feel good about it, but I just don't have, I don't know if Pueblo has anybody else that's Green Party here. And so, I'm Green Party, and um, there's six unaffiliated, you know, independents out there. The Green Party will probably choose their candidate, but uh, I don't know if there's going to be more than one. If there's only one choice, then there's uh, it would make more sense for me to be an unaffiliated voter. Unaffiliated voters actually double the power that they have electorally because not only can they vote in the Democratic primary for those that they want, unless there's just one clear winner and it doesn't matter, they can also jump into the Republican race and vote for the shittiest candidate and, you know, sabotage the Republican primary. So uh, to stay independent, you have the option to, you know, fuck up the Republicans or vote for the best Democrat. So the unaffiliated voters would actually have twice the power as a, you know, regular voter who has to vote in that primary. And then everybody gets to vote in the general election. Uh, first, I do got to see what the Greens are going to do. They're going to have a convention here in a couple of months. And, uh, yeah, so right now with the Democratic candidates in Colorado, they suck. Okay, so, okay, you got Kerry Kennedy, you have Eric M. Underwood, Noel Ginsburg, Adam Garrity, Ed Perlmutter, Mike Johnston, Moses Humes, and Michael Schroeder. Okay? So let's, one more time, because you got to say these a million times to get these, you know. Um, you got Michael Schroeder, the anti voter. You got Moses Humes, Mike Johnston, Ed Perlmutter, Adam Garrity, a rarity, Noel Ginsburg, Eric M. Underwood, and Kerry come up with a Pueblo Citizen 10-point platform for Colorado. I'll probably end up calling it the Pueblo platform, but that's not for the city of Pueblo. It's for Colorado, and I'll have to call my Pueblo platform, which I haven't come up with yet. Um, I got an idea. Uh, Sweden's trash to electric program is I don't see what the fucking downside of that could be. <laughs> What's the downside with taking trash and making electricity out of it? Um, the big landfill, you know, big government, you're going to make government smaller, you're going to get the landfill business, you're going to, you know, cut them out from, you know, taking a bunch of trash and burying it under dirt. Um, I don't know if that's really depriving them of an opportunity. Yeah, I guess so, they won't profit anymore, but it's good for the environment and it's good for the rest of us, so fuck big landfill, okay? Um, let's get Sweden's trash to electricity here in the city of Pueblo, but for Colorado, I've already written up this tin, this list, is, that's just a disclaimer, that's just a caveat, uh, because I don't want you to think that I'm only a one-issue candidate. The, the legalization of marijuana, I think, is the vanguard issue. It's the one that, you know, I've been fighting for for decades, you know, my entire life. I've been on the good side, right, on the good side, uh, and we were winning, and we won, okay? So now let's uh, keep this victory. Let's hold on to this victory. Let's protect this revolutionary change 
here in Colorado. So that's my number one issue, but I also believe in ranked choice voting. I'm pro unions. I want to go green, you know, moratorium on foreclosures, free health care, curb police violence, do something about the homeless and the poor, get some democracy in our school system, and free child care. So that's all ten of my issues. So I have a more, you know, I'm not just a one issue candidate, but let's just take that one issue, okay? So out of these eight candidates, who's going to protect the legalization of marijuana? Which one of these candidates will do? Candidates that are running for the Democratic uh, primary here in Colorado, the ones that have declared they still have another six months for more to jump in. But if I was to vote today, I'm going to rank all these assholes. The Democratic Party is in shambles. The Democratic Party is going to fucking lose. There's George Brockler has already won this goddamn thing, and I don't see, um, uh, you know, out of all these eight candidates, there's only one that is worth a damn, okay? The rest of them I don't, you know, give a fuck about. So uh, maybe two, maybe two. Okay, so when it comes to marijuana, Ed Perlmutter, he uh, introduced legislation to try to protect banks who are involved with the marijuana industry from getting in trouble. So that's progressive, right? He was protecting the bankers, which, you know, big shocker there. But they just, it's illegal federally, so they didn't want to get in trouble. Now, you have uh, Adam Garrity, who will protect marijuana. In fact, he said that the National Guard should be used to stop the Adam Garrity understands the political situation. He knows that there's, you know, two governments, the state government and the national government, but the U.S. Constitution was actually written to limit their power, right? They're, they don't have all the power. They, yeah, they wrote a supremacy clause, but so does the state constitution. So which one's supreme? They battle it out all the time. So Adam Garrity understands that, you know, the marijuana industry is to be protected and that it needs to be protected. And that, you know, if it takes the National Guard, yes, Colorado will have to nationalize the National Guard and probably all the, you know, cops and deputies and whatnot in order to stop the feds from coming into our state and fucking with anybody that's doing anything with marijuana. No, no, we voted for this. This is what Colorado wants. Fuck you feds, okay? So Adam Garrity is the only one that's got a crystal, you know, clear-eyed, starry-eyed, idealistic vision of marijuana and how it should be protected. But he understands, really, it's just the other seven candidates have been completely uh, silent about this, or at least all of them but one, okay? So Kerry Kennedy, let's see, Kerry Kennedy, what is Kerry Kennedy? Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? I care about y'all. I care. I really do. I care. I care about you, and I care about my truck. I care about my cowboy hat and my belt buckle, because I'm, you know, I'm this good old redneck woman here. <laughs> Right, just uh, being all fluffy and, um, you know, if that uh, wins her, you know, uh, votes, you know, good for her. I uh, only want to talk about the policies and the issues. That's all I want to talk about. So where is Karen Kennedy on the legalization of marijuana? I asked her on Twitter what she thought about it. Fucking ignored me. I know she's, you know, somebody on her staff is reading that shit. Doesn't say a goddamn word. Are you trying to get my vote or are you not trying to get my vote? And then uh, Eric M. Underwood, he's a Republican. I have no idea what the fuck he even believes or why he's a Democrat. So, hi, y'all. I just, I'm Carrie Kennedy, and I just care about all y'all, you know. I care about your education. I care about your kids. And I don't want uh, our children to just be test takers. I want them to be creative and problem-solving thinkers. I really care and love Colorado. I love the environment, and I love all of you all. And, you know, it's time for a change, and that's why I decided to run for governor. <laughs> so, Carrie Kennedy, I know she's pro-choice. I know that she admits to climate change. I know she's in favor of universal health care. But what's her plan? State health care? What are we going to do in order, you know, the state legislature went ahead and raised marijuana taxes up. So I think you should protect the marijuana industry, right, if you want universal health care. Eric M. Underwood, right? I don't, he's a Republican. He ran Republican twice, uh, once as a congressman and once as something else. So, and he lost. He only got like three votes. So him and his two friends voted for him. But he's been in two, Eric M. Underwood has been in two Republican elections two times, and he got smashed, and he talks like a conservative. So I don't know what, he's just the anti-Trump, you know. I don't, uh, Eric M. Underwood won't protect the legalization of marijuana. Neil uh, none of these assholes will. So it's not just, okay, so Kerry Kennedy won't protect marijuana. Eric M. Underwood won't protect marijuana. Noel Ginsburg won't protect marijuana. Adam Garrity will of Pittsburgh. So he's the only one. And Ed Perlmutter, he will um, probably defend marijuana. I don't know for sure, but Ed Perlmutter is actually shockingly surprising. 
I kind of dismissed him because he was old, and uh, since he was a U.S. congressman, I already felt like he had too much sort of entrenched power. But he's actually he's pro democracy. Um, he's against. Uh, he's in favor of Dodd Frank, so he wants to get money out of politics. And he passed that bank bill, you know. So Ed Perlmutter passed that bill protecting the bankers or trying to get protection for the bankers that were in the marijuana industry. So that's good. You know, he seems to be leaning in the right direction. But let's check out Mike Johnston. Mike Johnston is probably the favorite, I would say, in the Democratic Party to win. Mike Johnston, however, is, you know, there's a lot to be desired. When it comes to him being the anti-George Brockler, he has to be as strong as George Brockler, but be able to smash George Brockler when it comes to progressive issues. I don't see Mike Johnson staking out progressive issues right now. I see him being very conservative and saying very little of substance. So Mike Johnson, when it comes to marijuana, yeah, he might have, you know, he's a state senator, so I guess he helped, you know, pass the legislation or the laws that we all work with. But he also passed an amendment to make sure marijuana concentrates are illegal. So that means you cannot put, you know, I think hemp oil is you, you just take alcohol, you take marijuana, you put it in a bowl, and you put alcohol on top of it, and that's it. That's not a lab. That's not like a meth lab. That's, uh, you know, that's <laughs> just a bowl of marijuana with alcohol in it. Uh, but he made sure he passed that, so you can't make, uh, you know, concentrates in the privacy of your own home. Well, why did he need to do that? He's not protecting the marijuana industry like this is a revolution that needs to be protected. He is sitting there trying to roll things back. He's trying to scale it back. And what would be the problem with hemp oil is, like, literally fucking medicine, you know? Instead of having to smoke it, now you can eat it, you know? Why would you be against, you know, private citizens doing something like that? This is just fucking politicians being afraid that their power is slipping from their hands, so they just keep on, you know, tacking on, um, well, we've got to make sure it's this and it's that. No, we got to make sure it stays legal, okay? That's not even guaranteed yet. We need to consolidate and institutionalize the legalization of marijuana, and only one candidate out of the entire Democratic Party, out of all eight candidates, will do that. Mike Johnson is trying to roll back the you know, gains of the legalization of marijuana movement, and he is not consolidating or institutionalizing this. He's running backwards. I mean, he was with work, you know, uh, Teach for America, so of course they're biased against people with marijuana, just like the federal government FAFSA, the federal uh, government loan program, is biased specifically against marijuana. So you have uh, Moses Humes. Moses Humes actually might be, you know, one of the supporters of the legalization of marijuana. And then you got Michael Schroeder. So Mike Johnston actually leans more towards Michael Schroeder. So this motherfucker, Michael Schroeder is not a Democrat. Michael Schroeder is a wolf in sheep's, sheep's clothing. I swear Nixon or, you know, Bush, this is uh, 1971 that the war on drugs was passed. So if you're uh, in favor of the war on drugs, you're a fucking Republican. Don't, you know, fuck you. You're for big government. You want to take away my rights as an individual. Kerry Kennedy is not going to protect the legalization of marijuana. Eric M. Underwood definitely will not protect the legalization of uh, marijuana. Noel Ginsburg, absolutely not. Wouldn't do it in a million years. Uh, Adam Garrity would. He definitely would. Ed Perlmutter might. Mike Johnston, he may or may not. He, look, I bet he won't. I think he leans towards Mike Schroeder. So Mike Johnson won't protect the legalization of marijuana. Michael Schroeder won't protect the legalization of marijuana. Only Ed Perlmutter might. Moses Humes. Moses, I think, Carmen Humes may also. But only one candidate, we are guaranteed, without a doubt, to have the uh, legalization. The marijuana industry will stay intact and will get better and will be expanding so that way, you know, the culture, maybe that's just, you know, people aren't used to it yet. We should have marijuana gardens in every city, you know, every place in this city. Talked much about Moses Carmen Humes at all. I did all those other sort of biographical sort of general, you know, understanding with what I was able to read from the net. Now, take a look at Moses Carmen Humes, okay? He reminds me of a meme, this meme, this famous meme. So check out this meme. And he kind of reminds me of him. He seems like he's well-intentioned, seems like a good young man, but he seems very much by himself. Okay, so let's give this man, you know, a fair shot. He's a citizen just like anybody else, and policy is the only thing that matters. So the Democrats, it'd be interesting to see how Moses Carmen Humes is uh, treated by the Democratic Party. Now, that's assuming Moses Carmen Humes is a real person. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced that 
knows this Carmen Humes is a real person. Um, he tried to get on the ballot here in 2016 for the U.S. House to represent the 5th Congressional District of Colorado, but he wasn't able to get on the ballot. And that's the extent of Moses, uh, Carmen Humes, his entire, you know, um, his entire political legacy, he tried to get on the ballot two year, or one year ago, and he couldn't. So that's Ballotpedia. Good job, Ballotpedia. Way to, you know, I don't even know why that's fucking mentioned <laughs> at all. So that, that's horrible. That, that's, you know, the only thing that people can know about him. Now, Moses Carmen Human, uh, or Carmen Humes, okay, so Moses, let's just go with Moses, right? You know, you Christians, you know that, you know, Moses took the slaves to the promised land. So he, uh, let's see, I, he's got a Facebook page. The media has already skirted around him. They've also skirted around Michael Schroeder, and they've skirted around uh, Garrity. So that means what? We're not going to represent everybody? Is that the kind of democracy you want to live in? No. We need to. Eight is a manageable number. So for right now, there's eight candidates that's running for governor. I, I'll accept two more, okay? This feel for who this uh, Moses Carmen Humes is, he essentially says that he wants to fight for civil rights. I asked him a question, and it took him a day to eventually get to me, but he wants to fix health care. He wants more jobs, schools, colleges, roads, bridges, and civil rights. And he also wants to make sure that the cities are using the tax money appropriately. <laughs> that's, that's good. Every single one of those things is fucking badass. Fix health care, more jobs, schools, colleges, roads, bridges, civil rights. That's what Noel Ginsburg's saying. That's what Mike Johnston's saying. That's what Kerry Kennedy is saying, right? All these watchwords. Oh, I care about health care, and I care about jobs and infrastructure. Well, the Republicans are saying the same shit. So how are the Democrats any better than the Republicans? You guys are using the same watchwords, but let's, you know, the devil's in the details. Let's see your plans. I want to see your plan for every single one of your planks to your platform, Democrats, every single what was my first indication that Moses Carmen Humes actually was running for office? Well, he's got a Facebook page that says Moses Carmen Humes for governor, <laughs> and he's been posting recently. Uh, and his name has, you know, been filed with the Secretary of State, according to one article. And the Secretary of State, that's fucking shameful. It's hard. I don't even know. How, where do you find who's even, you know, only the articles of papers and people declaring on Facebook. This is the only way that I have been able to find out who's running, who's not. There's six independents. I can't tell you which one of those independents are actually running, which one's my Green Party, you know, candidate, because I like one of these Democrats. Now he's saying Happy Easter to everybody, right, which I don't know about that, but... He's saying, can I really say, wow, now, Pueblo is wanting to get a special marijuana sales tax bill to fix the county jail and the Pueblo Zoo. Okay, I can see the zoo, but what about your roads, schools? How about more activities to keep youth and adults? There is a fascist branch. There is rogue militia running around here in the United States, and they do need to be, you know, ramped in. So he is essentially saying this, marijuana gets all these marijuana sales, but they're using it to fix the county jail? Okay, we can fix the county zoo, he says. The zoo, right, it's a good educational experience and whatnot. But he's saying, why do we need to prioritize the county jail over everything else? We don't need to be throwing more people in jail. We need to figure out ways to keep them out of jail. That's exactly what he's saying here. And he's also saying that roads, schools, and activities to keep the youth and adults out of jail are more important. So his priorities are, you know, helping people, giving people what they need, the opportunities and the, you know, Maslow's hierarchy, all their, you know, life essentials, so that way they could be great, productive members of society. Instead of, you know, for every $1 we invest in education, we save $2 with jail. There is a Moses. I hope Moses is a real person. <laughs> Moses, you know, I actually, for, compared to the rest of these, um, I'm going to have to rename and reorder these because I'm more inspired by Moses, and I think Moses is an important person to see how the Democratic Party treats the Democratic candidates. If these are the eight candidates, he should be on the debate stage just like anybody else. We should have equal access to you know, the public broadcasting and the debate stage, and the Democratic Party should not be choosing you know, behind closed doors who the fuck they want you know, to, uh, the Democratic Party to represent. They should let the people decide and give everybody an equal shot, an equal, you know, amount of money, amount of time, amount of effort. You cannot pick one over the other. So Moses Humes, I don't even know if he's real. It could be some weird person just doing some social experiment and saying, well, I, you know, somehow got his name on the ballot and then somehow got a Facebook account. But it's 
spite of whether Moses Humes is real or not, in spite of him being probably a long-shot candidate, probably doesn't have much funds, in spite of Moses Humes of Wheat Ridge kind of seemingly, you know, uh, I don't even know if he exists. <laughs> so he probably is a weak candidate, but I don't even know if he's real. But he's not the worst. He's not the worst. Michael Schroeder of Basalt is the fucking worst, okay? He is public enemy number one. Fuck Michael Schroeder, the anti-voter, okay? Michael Schroeder of Basalt, the anti-voter. A little background, he's a fiberglass man. He owns some patents. So he thinks he's Mr. Smart Guy, knows every goddamn thing. He does business with Arizona, so he's not even here in Colorado doing business, right? Rather take his business elsewhere. Michael Schroeder is Colorado's public enemy number one, especially the Democratic Party. He's, I'll say it that way. Uh, Michael Schroeder is the Democratic Party's number one public enemy. Because he's not a Democrat, Michael Schroeder, hey, what do you believe on? You know, what do you believe in? What kind of voter, you know, what kind of, uh, can, what kind of governor are you going to be when you, uh, you know, get the gauntlet, when you get the powder and Michael... Uh, the power in Michael Schroeder, he said that he's going to go after potheads. He's going to go straight after the marijuana industry. He's sick of this marijuana shit, and he's going to fuck your whole life up. So if you're a one pothead or two person who believes in, you know, peace, love, freedom, um, b believes that Americans have a right to do what they want to their own bodies, then Michael Schroeder doesn't represent you. That's not liberal. Liberals are in favor of change, having liberals, you know, liberal amount of marijuana everywhere. Here's some marijuana. Here's some marijuana. Everybody marijuana. That's a liberal issue. Nixon is the one that passed the war, uh, you know, on marijuana in 1971. And the reason why Nixon passed the war on marijuana is to go after black people and to go after protesters, left-wing activists. That's Michael Schroeder. Schroeder will go, you know, directly into the fucking heart. The vanguard of the revolution, he's a reactionary. He's an anti-revolutionary. He's going to undo any of the gains that the progressives here in Colorado have already made. So he's definitely not a Republican. He's way more Republican than Eric Underwood, okay? So that's saying something. Eric Underwood was registered Republican, ran two times, two campaigns as a Republican, but this Michael Schroeder, he's, you know, pro-big business, he only cares about his own money, his own pockets, he's the selfish, he's a fascist, right-wing, he wants big government, he believes in expanding Richard Milhouse Nixon's big government 1971 war on drugs, war on marijuana program. He wants to make sure that there's, the war on marijuana stays going on. He wants to throw potheads into prison, all the potheads need to go to prison for hundreds and hundreds of years. He is sick of the marijuana bullshit here in Colorado. So fuck you, my, uh, Michael Schroeder, the anti-voter, okay? Schroeder is just a, you know, he's a bigot against potheads. He's a right-wing fascist. He's a violent psychopath. He wants big government. He wants to come after the progressive. This is the America's final frontier, right? Black people got the right to vote. Women got the right to vote. Now we all can smoke pot, okay? America is the, you know... Uh, the, the freedom, right? I, I believe somewhere, something about freedom, America, that we have the right to our own body. I don't know. Maybe that's human rights. If we, um, Eleanor Roosevelt wrote the, you know, human rights, right? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I think we have a right to our own bodies. But even if you don't fucking tell me that, even if I don't read that, yes, I do have a... <laughs> So, you know, fuck Michael Schroeder. Uh, Michael Schroeder, under a Schroeder administration, all of Colorado would just completely collapse. He stands in the polar opposite of morality. Me and him would not mesh well. He will bankrupt the state. When it came to getting health care, uh, the state went ahead and raised marijuana taxes up. Michael Schroeder will not, he won't be any fucking different. He'll talk all this shit about marijuana, but as soon as he gets in there, he'll say, give me that tax revenue so he can spend it on his fucking programs. Well, what's his programs? It seems like he just wants to hate, you know, on potheads. That's his entire fucking platform for is all I can tell. And um, so that's, uh, fuck him. Fuck Michael Schroeder. He is a, he's a piece of shit. Michael Schroeder will piss in your cornflakes. Michael Schroeder will kick your dog. He will spit in your grandmother's face. He will not help your grandmother across the street, he will spit in their face. And when it comes to uh, getting us health care or education or schools or the hospitals that we need, Michael Schroeder is, you know, he's going to fuck marijuana users over but then take the marijuana taxes because he's a double-thinking, hypocritical, fascist, psycho, son of a bitch. So Michael Schroeder is the kind of man that will just throw trash into your yard and then just laugh about it and not give a shit. He's a litter bug. Michael Schroeder will uh, break into your station wagon and take a dump in the back of it. 
this is the kind of man that Michael Schroeder is. And then say, well, it wasn't me. I didn't do nothing about it. Pretend he had nothing to do with it, right? And he would never, he's just a bad person. He's a piece of shit. He's such a huge piece of shit, he couldn't even fit into the sewers. He is God, man. Um, he'd have to be picked up with a tow motor fork, a pitch, or a forklift. <laughs> That's how big of a piece of shit he is, right? It would take, like, uh, the Incredible Hulk to pick his fucking big piece of shittiness up. Not even his mother loves him. Michael Schroeder is just, you know, he's got a worldview that stops America from being America. And frankly, I'd like my country. I'm, I'm uh, proud America. I'm a proud American. <laughs> a U.S. American, right? South Carolina beauty pageant winner. But I'm a proud. Coloradans have a right to their own body. So I think it's time for Americans to be American again. Remember when we, you know, uh, valued liberty and freedom and we didn't want, uh, you know, people uh, infringing upon our Fourth Amendment and First and Second and Third and Fifth Amendment. <laughs> the whole Bill of Rights. I am pro Bill of Rights. Is Kerry Kennedy pro Bill of Rights? Is Mike Johnston pro Bill of Rights? Is um, in Dole, Noel Ginsburg, is it Noel or Noel? No, Noel. It's probably Noel, right? So is that Ginsburg, dude? Is he? Um, whatever I just said. <laughs> so Mike Schroeder, the anti-voter, he doesn't, it probably doesn't even register his corporations in Colorado, so he's skirting the taxes anyways. He's, he, pays, he probably no, pays no taxes. Um, with health care, okay, so, you know, he's going to go after marijuana, but then where's that money for health care and the roads and bridges and shit? Michael Schroeder, you're not thinking of the big picture here. You're not going to get two-faced, psychopathic Michael Schroeder, son of a bitch. He's not going to implement the Portugal decriminalize all drugs model. He's a honing missile directly into the heart of the legalization of marijuana movement, directly into the heart of the marijuana industry. So he's going to say he hates marijuana, but, you know, just like all these hypocritical politicians around here, he's going to have his hand out, you know, the first fucking moment his government needs some more money. They're, these motherfuckers are all the same, okay? So he, needs, he needed to tell you, you know, out of all the issues in the world, he needed to tell the world how much he hated the legalization of marijuana here in Colorado. That's the main thrust of why he's even in this race, to go after the potheads, his his mama says that potheads just ruining the country. <laughs> Daddy, I'll make you proud. I'll, I'll beat up. His dad probably did take him out to the woodshed, right, just like Nixon's daddy did. But 100 years in jail, that's the only issue. Michael Schroeder decided to bitch about marijuana. He wasn't talking about the lack of health care access or educational opportunities. Not about the homeless. Right. Not about the lack of democracy, not about ranked choice voting, not about Sweden's uh, trash to electricity program, not helping the energy crisis, not making it, you know, greener, not caring about the environment, not curbing police brutality. The main issue that Michael Schroeder talked about was uh, fuck pot. So not taxes, not gun control, not, you know, I mean, not heroin, not even heroin. So he bypassed the heroin and the crack, and he said, look at you, fucking potheads. It's your fucking fault. What? What's my fault? <laughs> Nothing. In fact, it's your fucking fault, not giving a shit about the poverty. That's why we got poverty here, because you don't give a shit. It's people with you, with your attitude, Mike Schroeder, why poverty and homelessness is still here. Have I made myself clear, Colorado? Uh, out of all the Democrats, Mike Schroeder is the only one I fucking hate. I hate with the core of my being, and the problem isn't uh, hate, it's fear. It's my fear that he actually might win, and he might be the, you know, the fucking face of the Democratic Party, somebody who is against the legalization of marijuana. So out of my top ten issues, that was my number one issue, protect the marijuana industry. That's the reason why Colorado is better than Kentucky. If all these states pretty much have the same, you know, the shit that's going on here. There's eight other states, so if Colorado wants to keep going fucking backwards, you know, I got other choices, but uh, I don't. I don't know any bad potheads. I don't know anybody that smokes marijuana and hurts other people. The culture of marijuana is also a very important culture, one of peace, love, sharing stories, you know, talking to each other. So, uh, for Mike Schroeder to come out, fuck Mike Schroeder of assault. Fuck him. Fuck the uh, Mike Schroeder, the odor floater. Mike Schroeder, the gopher. Mike Schroeder, the uh, the gopher, the odor gopher. The choker, the gopher choker, <laughs> Michael Schroeder, the gopher choker. Would you vote for a gopher choker? Well, that's Mike Schroeder, and he's an anti-voter. He don't even like you. Michael Schroeder of assault. He's in favor of assault against your old heads. Mike Schroeder, Mike Schroeder, the bloviator.
the bloviator, Schroeder, no, I don't think so, the anti-voter, right? He's a gopher choker, he's an odor floater, uh, anti-voter, odor floater, gopher choker. So fuck Mike Schroeder, the anti-voter, anti-gopher, anti-voter, odor floater, gopher choker, fuck Mike Schroeder. Out of all the eight candidates that are running for the Democratic primary for Colorado governor, out of all of them, Michael Schroeder, hands down, probably one of the worst humans on the ballot, if not one of the human beings just ever on the face of the planet. So number eight on my ranked choice ballot would be Michael Schroeder. Number seven is Eric M. Underwood. Now, Eric M. Underwood does respond to you on Twitter. Eric M. Underwood is against Donald Trump. He said that's the reason that he became a Democrat. He used to be Republican, but then Donald Trump got elected, and then he's like, fuck Trump. So I agree with him on that. I agree with him that the health care will uh, destroy millions of peoples of health care. He's right about that. So he, is he for universal health care? What other issues does he stand for? I asked what liberal issues does he stand for. I asked what it took just over a million votes for Hinkenlooper to get into office, so it would take, I would guess if you thought 1.1 million, if you're like 1.1 million, and that comes out to what, $10 a vote? If Victor Mitchell spends $10 million, $5 million on the primary and $5 million in the general election, that means uh, for every single registered vote, they, you know, they spent $10 of all this advertisement, all these advertising. I think I'd rather just give, give me just give me the 10 bucks. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's uh, voter fraud, so, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, just some um, information about Colorado, so political operatives know what's up. So Moses Humes is number six. Eric M. Underwood would be number seven on my ranked choice voting. Moses Humes beats Eric M. Underwood. Hands down, Moses Humes actually strikes me as a person who gives a shit, who has a heart. Republicans are elitist. So Republican leaders are elitists who don't give a shit, and Democrats generally care about the poor and the vulnerable, right? And that uh, what started it out, that used to be, that's how, you know, it used to be the case. So Moses Humes, uh, even if he's fake, he is better than Eric M. Underwood uh, because he, whoever the person was, responded to me that he cared about health care, education, jobs. He wanted the marijuana money to be spent correctly. So actually that means he would be in favor of marijuana, right? If he's talking about the marijuana tax being, you know, spending, and then he's against private prisons, so he or he's talking about, you know, let's put our money uh, towards more preventive things, activities for the people, and you know, that's that's a that's a strong stance. He could get killed for that. He's standing up against, you know, the jail getting any more money. The jailers and their friends, their fascist friends, might be pissed off about something like that. So Moses Humes is number six on my rank. So Moses Humes kind of comes in from, you know, uh, one article actually said, well, we tried to get a hold of Moses Humes. He's not even running. Well, yes, Moses Humes is running. So automatically, you know, the media doesn't seem to be uh, giving Moses Humes his just desserts. Both, I would say, are fringe candidates, Eric Underwood and Moses Humes, and even that Schroeder. So I'm, I probably went, I probably give Schroeder too much credit, to be honest with you. <laughs> um but, uh, you know, Moses and Eric, I don't hate either one of them. I hate that Schroeder. I fucking hate him. And uh, even if his percentage of winning is less than 1%, fuck that guy. I don't, nobody should take that piece of shit serious. Okay? Now, number five. Number five candidate on my list of the best Democratic candidates out of the eight in the state of Colorado, Mike Johnston. Mike Johnston, you're number five out of eight. So Mike Johnson, he's, Johnson will protect Medicaid. I'm sure he's probably against the Trump health care thing, too, uh, Trump Care 2.0. He is in favor of the, the first two years of tuition being completely free. I like that, free college. It's only two years, and, you know, it's for vocational, too, so that's good. So it's not just for, you know, your elitist snobs, but also for your uh, Booker T, you know, um, workers out there. So you got vocational school, you got university for two years, as long as you volunteer, okay, you just keep adding more and more things. So while I like that first two years tuition free, it's one of the solid uh, policy issues that Mike Johnson actually stands up for, uh, one of substance, one of, you know, 
he's a big education guru, right? So he's saying that it's possible for Colorado to get two years of uh, tuition-free college and or vocational as long as you do volunteer work. So that's a good step in the right direction, but um, it's not good enough. Johnson is the Democratic darling. He almost seems like the inevitable victor of the Democratic race, but he's not going to beat uh, Brockler. He can't beat Brockler. He doesn't stand up for Democratic progressive issues strong enough. And if he can't even tell us, the base, that he's a progressive, how's he going to, you know, he's going to go against Brockler by running to the right and trying to be like a, you know, a Republican piece of shit. He should be a, a strong, progressive candidate, and he should take his lick. Stand up for the two years of free college. It's a good first step. So good for Mike Johnson for at least coming up with that policy issue. He also will protect Medicaid, so that's a good thing. He passed a bill that made chokeholds illegal, so he's not a totalitarian fascist. He does curb some police brutality. That's inspiring. That's helpful. But that's, that's it. You know, he's worked with poor children. He wants everybody to get a good education, get good jobs. He doesn't have a jobs plan. His uh, free college, even though, you know, I think it's a good first step, just the two-year college program, the free two years, of college for every Colorado and plan of Mike Johnson's is great, it's wonderful, but it sounds more like a Hillary Clinton plan. Um, no, give us the vision, Mike Johnson, give us the vision. You, you will be able to hammer out the details. I think you're smart enough to be able to hammer out the details, but if you go up there and you say that we could do four years of college for free, if you looked at the tax revenues in, of marijuana, because that was my idea for Kentucky, legalized marijuana, then all those trillions worth of tax dollars can just go to all these social programs. And so if Mike Johnson said, you know what, we could do four years of free college, I would listen to that. If he says, this is how we could get health care, too, this is how we could get child care, too, I would listen to all that. But he's not saying any of that stuff. So he's saying very little. He's saying very little. And so I'm, you know, I'm grasping at straws here. When I found out that Kerry Kennedy actually believed in climate change, I was like, oh, thank God. One of these Democrats said something that Mike Johnson passed that, you know, marijuana concentrates. He made it illegal. So no hemp oil for anybody you know, that might be suffering of cancer, you can't make your own hemp oil. You must go and spend it at the retail shops. And that's just, you know, that's just such bullshit. You know, the, yeah, people tax it and regulate it, but in your own home, you should be able to raise gardens and what the fuck is it, you know, I don't know. Um, so I voted uh, Mike Johnson this low for a reason. This was definitely intentional. I'm being critical of the Democratic Party for a reason, too. Fuck it up your games, Democrats. Shit. Um, we saw how Hillary lost because she was a corporatist right-wing warmonger. We need progressive candidates. The majority of the American people love progressive ideas, so you just need a progressive candidate that stands up, says the progressive ideas. People are going to criticize you no matter what the fuck you say, so why not stand for something? Actually stand for something, and if you lose, you lost based upon, you know, your own prowess, not based upon you being a limp, needle dick, fucking... Not even uh, just Michael Johnson. I mean, I was looking, even Moses Humes, I just kind of talked to him today, and he said he talked about civil rights. He talked about health care. He's uh, criticizing, you know, prisons, getting more money with the tax revenues. He's saying that there's bigger priorities, and he's right. So I already know just by one little paragraph, a lot of policy ideas that Moses Hume stands for. He's actually, I wanted to kind of vote him, you know, really high. I just couldn't get over the fact that I didn't know if he was real or not. I don't know if it's a real person, but, you know, there's a heartbeat behind that. And if it's not just a troll, then Moses Humes is a really good fucking guy. Give, uh, you know, the stage to Moses Humes and see what he has to say. Since we're Democrats, we believe in democracy, so therefore Moses Humes is a part of this conversation just like anybody else. So I, I just feel like when it comes to all the Democratic candidates, except for one, except for one, out of all the Democratic, so out of all the Democrats, you know, I discovered the, before I discovered the top candidate, before the, you know, fucking uh, Anshalata, before the man, you know, popped into my world, <laughs> it was hard to determine which of these folks to, to pick. It was hard. Mike Johnson, it was hard to decide between you and Noel Ginsburg and Kerry Kennedy and um, Ed Perlmutter, which I voted all of them above you. And since it was hard, I probably, if the, you know, number one candidate wasn't in there, then I probably wouldn't have put you so low. I probably would have put you at the very top. But, you know, uh, I'm just grasping that straw for some real policy issues. Let's, I'm only going to stick with the issues and the policy. 
some of your personality matters about, you know, whether or not you can stand up and be heard and, you know, force people to the way that you're thinking right, corral, get those votes that you need um, in order to pass your le legislation, be a cheerleader, get all the corporations and businesses into the state. So, you know, the personality... Uh, It doesn't matter, like, uh, who would get us, you know, um, Medicare for all? Who's going to get us universal health care? I heard Mussolini got Italy universal health care. Mussolini. Harry Truman was talking about universal health care. And then you have Nader, who was for single-payer universal health care in 2000. Otto van Bismarck, in the 1870s, 1880s, he gave Germany universal health care. 1870s. So over 150 fucking years ago, Germans who have the best capitalist and socialist system, they do better uh, socialism and capitalism better than the United States does. They do them both better. That's what America should be doing. Kicking ass with capitalism, kicking ass with socialism, have a synthesis between the two. Of course, of course that's what you should do. You think with your mind and you feel with your heart and then you got to, you know, figure those two dynamics out. That's life. What the fuck? So... <laughs> I was actually excited to hear Carrie Kennedy saw a post something about being pro-choice. So Carrie Kennedy is for health care. She's uh, pro-choice. She thinks that climate change is real. Already she's already got some real major, you know, policy issues that stands to compare with Mike Johnston. So Mike Johnston, I just didn't see him actually, you know, uh, for all these Democratic candidates, except for the one, it was just hard to determine. They were equally vapid. They didn't present core principles, no real policies of substance, no clear vision. Only one had a clear vision on education, and that was Noel Ginsburg. He has a Switzerland model for education. Switzerland. There's lots of countries doing lots of, you know, let's not just introduce Switzerland into the conversation, which I think has no homeless at all. So no homeless whatsoever in Switzerland. They're talking about the universal basic income there. Denmark, the happiest country in the world, they got the highest taxes, 80% tax rate. Sweden, Norway, Germany, Britain. Ginsburg also come across as very genuine. You know, he says he's not running just for his own vanity. It's because, you know, he feels like he needs to change things. That's good, man. That's really awesome. You know, it's not just about his ambition. It's about him giving a shit. And then when he had his vision on education, I think Switzerland, introducing the Switzerland model for education, opens up the door to talk about all these other European countries and all the nations in the world. Uh, Australia, they got a badass democracy, you know, ranked choice voting. It's just the uh, states were supposed to be laboratories of democracy. So that was supposed to be a good thing. You could look over to one state, state see what they're doing, and implement it here. Out of the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should prevail. So why would we not look at other countries who are doing, you know, got these great programs that are successful and working and they're popular? Why would we not copy that model? That's fucking genius. Well, we all got to be original and just come up with our own shit all the time. And that's good. It's innovative. But you can't recreate the wheel. Number five is Mike Johnston. Number four, Carrie Kennedy. Now, Carrie Kennedy, she admits that climate change is real. She uh, is in favor of health care. She did something else that I checked off on my top ten list. I was like, oh, okay, so she actually does represent me when it comes to um, something. <laughs> she said something. Let's see. Pro, Pro-choice. She admits climate change, so she cares about the environment. Okay? She cares about the environment. That's how low my standards were. I'm like, oh, wait. She said something about climate change. So she cares about the environment. Maybe she's better than Mike Johnston. Maybe. No, not at all, okay? Now, I like Carrie Kennedy being in the race. She seems fun and flirty and, you know, having a woman in the race is good. She's the only woman there, so I have to, like, check myself just to make sure I'm not being sexist with her. But it's, when I think about her personality, okay, so it's fun and flirty, and it kind of, I'm a little jealous of it because, like, she gets to go around laughing and having a good time and isn't worried about, I went to go visit my friend in the Fremont County Jail. And if you know anything about Fremont County, you know that they got some uh, big-ass corruption. There's dead bodies in Fremont County, and it's by the public officials. So, big shocker. But when I go up there, I'm fucking nervous. I just want to visit my friend, make sure he's, you know, still alive, make sure he's not dead. They said that he was still there. But eventually they gave me this bullshit reason and that bullshit reason, and then I was driving back home. And it was a woman. It was a white woman that did it. But the dead bodies are white women, too. So it's just, uh, I don't know. I feel like if the feds were to come into Colorado, does Kerry Kennedy call out the National Guard and fight the feds? 
Does she make, you know, a strong principled stance or does she want everybody to like her? If she's just trying to get everybody to like her, then I don't know if she'll make the decisions that need to be made, such as Sheriff Kerry Kennedy uh, knows that she can call the feds out or call the National Guard out in, in order to fight the feds, nationalize the National Guard. The Colorado governors in uh, charge of it don't let, you know, the uh, federal government nationalize it. You nationalize it first. And I would nationalize every sheriff, too, and allow them to call up their posses. No, absolutely not. You cannot come in here. Marijuana is legal in the state of Colorado. And if you try to fuck with that, then you're going to go to jail. You're going to go to jail, and you're going to have, you know, you're, there's going to be consequences. You're not just going to be able to come in here and fuck with people no more. Sorry, feds, can't do that. So Carrie Kennedy's personality leads me to believe that she, you know, doesn't understand or doesn't know, you know, I don't know if she would feel felt the same way if she would have gone to that jail. It seems like she has a nice, happy life. It's so good for her. I, you know, um, it, you can do what you want. You can be happy. You can enjoy yourself. But there's a lot of people out here that's hurting, and we need someone that I like about Carrie Kennedy. She uh, started her campaign out on a Facebook video. So Facebook Live is revolutionary. I've seen so many, you know, so much shit that happened on the Facebook Live. Even here um, at my house, you know, for security, I almost think that putting Facebook Live and just turning it on, I don't even know how long it goes. You could go on for eight hours and you could, you know, videotape it anywhere. Facebook Live is uh, revolutionary, and so she's, you know, good. it's good that she knows that. So she's kind of, you know, ahead of the curve on that front. Uh, she took a strong stance against Trump care, pointed out accurately 600,000 Coloradans would lose their health care. She's in uh, pro-choice. She's pro-choice. So that's a good thing, too. Um, I do wonder, though, Hillary Clinton seemed to be pro-choice all the way up to nine months. And I don't know. I feel like I want a line. I want a line drawn between when is the baby a life and when isn't it a life. Nine months. You waited nine months before you got an abortion put that to the side. I'm happy that she's pro-choice. Okay, so Carrie Kennedy is pro-choice. Carrie Kennedy is against Trump Care 2.0, and she admitted that climate change is real, so she cares about the environment. So I get to check, you know, one of my 10 planks or maybe two of my 10 planks off, but for the most part, you know, she's just as uh, vapid. Um, she doesn't come across as authentic. She doesn't have any concrete plans. She doesn't have any vision. So, you know, Facebook Live is revolutionary, so and keep your eyes on Carrie Kennedy because she gets nasty. She throws mud at the end, and so, you know, that's a good thing, too. It helps for a better conversation, I think, but, um, yeah. Oh, Carrie Kennedy, I, re I really care about y'all, okay? I do. I care so much. In fact, when I think about how much I care, I just burst into tears because I just care so much. And please. Carrie Kennedy is number four on my ranked choice voting list, and Mike Johnson is number five. Sorry, Mike Johnson. Um, in terms of who matches me and my beliefs, who will represent me when they're governor, there's another. There is another. So Ed Perlmutter of Avarda, he's kind of the dark horse in this race, and I'm actually going to expand a little bit because I didn't do a profile on Ed Perlmutter. Um, and generally speaking, the incumbents have a 95%, you know, a retention rate, which, you know, I don't even think Stalin or Hitler had that fucking high of a retention rate. 95%. So essentially, if you have a political position, you'll get reelected into that same position. So I feel like he could raise not a single dime, but he's going to get into the debates, and he's a serious person. He's up there with Mike Johnson, but because I had picked Mike Johnston over er Earl Perlmutter, I didn't give him a second thought. But... Ed Perlmutter is number three, and barely number three, okay? So when I started reconsidering Ed Perlmutter, I got on his Twitter, and he's got a YouTube page. He's talking, um, you know, about Dodd-Frank and how he's protecting it and how you should get money out of politics. He's marching for science. He's saying that he's admitting that climate change is real, so therefore, you know, taking Kerry Kennedy's only uh, substance, uh, policy of substance, so he believes that climate change is real. He's out there marching in defense of science. So he's in favor of science. And then the optics. He's got people surrounding him, and he's yelling, what does democracy look like? This is what democracy looks like. He uh, gets uh, campaigns at grocery stores. So he's actually meeting with his people. He's actually, everybody's got to go eat. So everybody, you know, that goes to the grocery store, everybody, that's just amazing. Ed Perlmutter has uh, been a delightful surprise for me. He's, you know, authentic. He's real.
messages to George Brockler. I tweeted him asking him if he would protect the marijuana industry as governor. Um, I have not reached out to Ed Perlmutter, so I think I actually will talk to him more on YouTube and uh, Twitter. He's, you know, there's the Vietnam War 50th commemoration. This is just some of, you know, the flavor of who Ed Perlmutter is. Science is science. It shouldn't be political. Um, let's defend science instead of putting it in jeopardy. EPA dismisses half of its scientific advisors on a keyboard. So Ed Perlmutter, right, he cares about the climate, which is a step above uh, Trump. Uh, teacher Appreciation Day, so that's the teacher's union. And I do believe in public schools. I wish they were actually, you know, uh, pro-democracy. They're not. They're fascist institutions that teach, you know, obedience and punctuality and just gets you used to the industrial factory, you know, system that they're trying to indoctrinate you in the beginning when they first founded the Prussian. Pearl Mutter is uh, fighting, you know, to defend Dodd-Frank. He's saying that uh, Trump care is going to take us backwards and Coloradans will suffer if it becomes law. He has a live reaction to the vote here. You can check that out. It's bad for the 24 million Americans who would lose coverage. It's bad for rural America. I'm not for sure who this bill is even good for. Man, Ed Perlmutter is going right after it. Attacking protections for Americans with pre-existing conditions is wrong. This bill will harm health coverage for millions. I offered an amendment to block the Wrong Choice Act. I think choice uh, Trump care until Trump releases his tax returns and we fully understand his conflicts of interest. That's another good point. Absolutely. He cares about his 1%. This is a massive redistribution of wealth to the 1%. Yeah, the tax returns should be known. You know, if, are we all supposed to just ignore our tax returns? Are we all not supposed to, are we supposed to skip out on our income taxes because we're still at war and fuck the war? I think it's a good thing that's good. There are three other things just from his Twitter account. He's proud to celebrate the National Small Business Week. So he's, yay, go small businesses. I heard they actually employ like 60-something percent of all the new employees. Uh, did you know new businesses and startups have accounted for 40% of new jobs over the last 20 years? Well, hell, I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> and he says, I'm proud to join my colleagues in introducing the Equality Act today to fight for equality and in LGBT discrimination. Equality forward. So good for Ed Perlmutter. I am quite impressed. That was, um, there's Ed for Colorado, and then there's Representative Ed or Representative something. So he's actually got two Twitter accounts. But uh, I, I'm very impressed with uh, his, even his uh, YouTube videos are not getting enough looks. So the fact that he's actually, I don't know if he's like a Bernie Sanders, right? He just speaks the truth so he gets marginalized. But when I saw how he talked about Dodd-Frank, he was just very colloquial. Look, this is what I think, and this is how it's for me to choose Ed Perlmutter to be number three. He's old, and so uh, that was why I picked Mike Johnston over him. And uh, I wasn't familiar with his policies, but the main thrust of his policies, we probably would agree with 90% of all the issues. And that's good. You know, that's good. So he protected the banks from federal prosecution if they're involved with the marijuana industry. I don't know if he would protect the marijuana industry or not. He's going to be able, he's going to be a part of this conversation from here until the end. He is a congressman, so he has to have a good knowledge of national issues and state issues, and he might get attacked for some of his national issues, even though they have, like, with war. I don't know what the state of Colorado could do when it comes to stopping the American government and them declaring war. Um, that's more of a national issue than a state issue. But, you know, um, I don't know. He's going to push the conversation on. I like him, and it's actually, I feel like between him and Noel Ginsburg, I probably cheated at promo. He believes in democracy, and that's a vision. That's a vision that I really like because I don't actually think a lot of people defend democracy like they should. Um, but he, it's not a clear vision. It's not a ranked choice. Is he in favor of ranked choice voting? Is he that democratic? How much are you for democracy, Ed? Are you, that's my number two issue, ranked choice voting. Will you accept ranked choice voting? Yes, of course you should if you're progressive. So I need to know more about his, you know, uh, plans for all these different issues. He's going to ca carry the conversation forward. Every House vote, any landmark legislation, his name's going to come up from here until November 6, 2018. In fact, I think he might, I don't know if he's up for re-election or not. So that's Judgment Day, right? That'll be the day we decide uh, who our next governor will be, Colorado. Um, so I like that he's Democratic. I wish he had a more specific plan, but he didn't. And... Um, yeah. Ed Perlmutter's cool, so I expect a lot more from Ed Perlmutter. Two, my number two choice for Colorado's governor, for the Democratic candidate, Noel Ginsburg. So you can meet or talk to Noel Ginsburg at twitter.com forward slash 
I think. <laughs> N-O-E-L-D-G. He's the man with the vision. Okay, so Noel Ginsberg had a specific vision. He said he wanted education to be better, but he says it should be the Switzerland model. Well, how come not the German model? Why not the UK model? Why not the Canadian model? Hell, why not the American model? Well, you like German? You like Switzerland better than us? Huh? Noel Ginsberg, you're going to take these foreigners' ideas, but you're not going to listen to us? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Switzerland, the model for the Switzerland is a apprentice system, so the business and the education system actually merge together, and that's a good idea. High-end, high-paying jobs, you know, uh, training the young apprentices. I heard Noel Ginsberg speak, but I like how authentic he comes across. He was a child slave. He was working in the factories when he was like eight years old, and he said it built a lot of character, and he grew to love the working class people. I don't know if that's true. He might have also pitied them, too, because, you know, being the uh, factory owner's son, he could just, you know, get up and go somewhere else, and he's a kid, you know, working with these men who this is what they've dedicated their whole lives to. So... It does seem like he gives a shit. It does seem like he seems a little paternalistic. He seems a little elitist. But then so is the FDR, right? He was a traitor to his own class. So I think we should pay attention to Noel Ginsburg. He's spending his own money. He's a businessman. He hasn't been in politics for quite some time. And he does, he's the workhorse. This is his own words. He's the workhorse. And all these other candidates are a bunch of show horses. And, uh, yeah, Kerry Kennedy, total show horse. Mike Johnson, a little bit of a show horse. Eric Un Noel Ginsburg said, not only should education be better, but here's the model that we should, uh, you know, do. This is the Switzerland model. Let's employ the Switzerland model here in Colorado for our educational system. He's absolutely right about that. Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Germany, Finland, Iceland, they're all doing incredible things. We should do what other countries are doing well, steal the best ideas that, you know, are out there, the best idea that's working. Let's just take those ideas. Um, Sweden's trash to electric. Who gives a shit? Sweden came up with it first. Who cares? It's so successful that Sweden is having to buy their neighbors. Norway's trash. That's how. It's like, we ran out of trash. Give us your trash. That's uh, Sweden. So the trash to electric program, just no-brainer, completely obvious. Um, Noel Ginsburg is pro-choice, so that's a good thing. It's another policy issue. Also, the first town that he came to speak to was... Noel Ginsburg picked Pueblo to be his first city that he opened up his campaign to, is that he just wants to show that he cares about the other cities out there. It's not just Denver, it's not just Boulder and Colorado Springs, but the Pueblos too, the 100,000 know, cities, and probably all small city towns is number one to Noel. He wants that rural vote. He wants to you know, um, appeal to a broad spectrum of people. So that's what he seems to care about the most is the rural public. If, to me, that's what it sounds like because uh, he chose Pueblo first, right? Could have easily gone somewhere in Denver. Um, I think he does speak, you know, everywhere. But Pueblo was his first place that he stopped. And so that, there's a reason why he started his campaign right here. Maybe it's Pueblo-specific. It's blue-collared uh, Hispanic town. So maybe he's, you know, reaching for Hispanic voters. Maybe it's the union voters. Maybe he has a woman here that he loves. I don't know. But he loves Pueblo. Now out loud here, there's actually like three candidates. Their main thrust, their progressive, you know, vision just shines through more than anybody else. And that's Moses Humes. He's a progressive. Moses Humes, whether he's real or not, is a progressive. You know, he's standing up to the uh, private prison industry. He could get shot for that. That's, you know, um, standing up to the military industrial complex, standing up to these, they're shooters anyway, and they get away with murder, right? They got the power, the, the, the will to be corrupt. Look at, you know, Fremont County. Fremont County is corrupt as fuck. They should recall that sheriff. If, uh, you know, that main dude doesn't get shot, it's, um, it's dangerous. What he's doing is dangerous. It's right, and it needs to be done. But, uh, yeah, so the other two ones, Ed Perlmutter and Moses Humes, their progressiveness. So I almost feel like, um, I feel like there might be better than Noel. The rest of Ed Perlmutter is progressivism, okay? So Ed Perlmutter is right, okay? I like Ed Perlmutter. He's a good character. And M Moses Humes, at least that one little paragraph that he typed to me, you know, he showed that he's willing to talk to me, so he's not an elitist, you know, uh, braggart. 
uh, doesn't think that they're better than me and actually says, okay, you seem like a voter and I'll go ahead and respond to you because I want to, you know, the fact that they wouldn't respond to me, they, that should worry all voters. All voters should be worried about that because if they don't talk to me, I'm a citizen, I'm just Joe Q. Public, you know, um, I don't think that they would be like, well, I remember when you said, you know, that one guy was an asshole and <laughs> they don't actually know me to, you know, to dislike me. So that means they're just being dismissive of anybody who has questions for them. You should be allowed to ask questions and, you know, hear their concerns. And if you cared about, you know, my issues, why would you not tell me? What do you think about the marijuana industry? I will protect the marijuana See how easy that was? I mean, uh, what would you do about health care? I will protect health care. What will you do about ranked choice voting? I will do everything that I can to increase democracy and get ranked choice voting and make it a, you know, if you agreed with me, now either A, you're stuck up and you don't want to talk to me, or B, you disagree with me and you're the opposite. Well, if you're the opposite, you know, either way, if you don't respond to my questions, then I, you leave me to, you know, my imagination. And my imagination is you have a bad staff who doesn't pass along messages, or you don't give a shit about me, you don't shit, give a shit about answering me, or you believe the exact opposite, so you're not going to tell me what you truly believe because you don't want to lie, so you just might as well, you know, I'll be quiet and maybe he'll just go away. We got a Twitter president. You know, Twitter is going to be important, and it's a good, you know, social media is a good way to actually reach out to the public. So Noel Ginsburg, you got number two spot, but just barely, just barely. Ed Perlmutter and Moses Humes is right. The number one candidate for the Democratic Party in the state of Colorado is Adam Garrity. Adam Garrity, okay? This motherfucker, he's a badass. He's a real motherfucking Coloradan. He's homegrown. He's been here for the last decade. Uh, he will totally protect the marijuana industry. Of course he'll protect it. He dabbles in cryptocurrency, so he's more evolved than all the rest. You know, before Adam Garrity came onto the scene, I'm grasping at straws. I'm like, oh, she believes in climate change. Thank God Kerry Kennedy believes in uh, climate change. Maybe, you know, uh, they'll actually do something about the environment. I don't think she has any plans, but, man, at least she at least cares about the environment. He cares about the environment. He has, he's a check on the police. He makes fun of Trump. Um, he's just so many good things, actually, about him. I can't go, um, I can't not talk good about him. There's just a million things talks about, you know, how the police can abuse their authority, so that's good. Sometimes cops can be bad. That's, I asked him that question, and he talked to me. He actually talked to me about all these issues. So he, on his Facebook, was, you know, criticizing the police. There are bad cops out there, and anybody that thinks all cops are good, you're dumb as fuck. Um, you're also a fascist fucking Nazi bootlicker. This isn't fucking Nazi Germany. This is America, okay? Just because somebody says, hey, I'm the boss, you're just going to, uh, okay, yes, sir, whatever you say. Get the fuck out of here. That's your public education making you uh, fucking kiss ass like that. So uh, he believes that there should be a check on the police. I don't know if it's a citizen's complaint authority. I don't know if we should test them on the Bill of Rights and Constitution. You know, Colorado and the U.S. Constitution, make sure they have, you know, all the statutes. They make sure they understand the three branches of government. Make sure they have all the Bill of Rights memorized. And then if there is a criminal cop, then they should go to jail. And that's exactly what Adam I went through my, you know, Pueblo Citizens 10-point platform for Colorado and asked him, you know, each and every one what he thought about it. Now, um, I believe he said we should protect health care. I didn't, um, I asked him why he was a Democrat, and he said because uh, Democrats care about the poor and they care about the vulnerable, whereas the Republicans only care about the elite. And that's right, that's true. So that's good. He will totally protect the marijuana industry. He's embedded in the marijuana industry, so he's personally making money himself. But he also wants to expand the marijuana industry when he gets, you know, the gauntlet. And he also leans towards the decriminalization of all drugs. He says the uh, Netherlands model is what he would, you know, model. He'd be modeled on the Netherlands model when it comes to decriminalizing all drugs, ending the war on drugs, standing up to the feds. He said he would call the National Guard out to stand up to the feds. Uh, Kerry Kennedy wouldn't do that, nor would Mike Johnston. I think that only Adam Garrity would do that. He agrees with unions, but believe they had their time and place, you know, so I explained to him that I think labor is more important than capital, and he seemed to sort of, I think he was uh, sympathetic towards it, but he points out all these corrupt unions, like the police union. He says the police union, you know, covers up their own, so that means they can go around killing people, such as Fremont County was the woman, you know, uh, they found the bloody, you know, everything, bloody everything, bloody rope, bloody socks. Um, in the deputy's uh, private storage unit. What the fuck, Fremont County sheriffs? What are y'all doing? 
sitting there killing people and then hiding the evidence in your storage locker so it can be discovered later. That's First, you're stupid, and you're not good at covering it up, and you're killing people. Or you're covering up the crime. You're covering up somebody being killed. So the police union, they're going to protect all these deputies? Is that the police union in Fremont? So Adam Garrity pointed out the problem with police unions. He says that pretty much helps with their corruption. He's absolutely right. It helps with the thin blue line, right? But if I'm the sheriff and somebody kills somebody, you don't represent me. I, you know, like, can we agree that murder is wrong? I mean, I'd like to think that rape and violence and stealing, I'd like to think those are wrong. But if we can't, as a society, say that murder is wrong, then we don't have a basis for a foundation. What's so fucking ever? So if you think that it's okay for the Fremont County deputy to either A, cover up the murder, or B, do the murder himself, then you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. If I'm a sheriff, that guy goes to jail. He don't just get fired. He goes straight to jail, and he gets charged just like anybody else. Just because you got a badge doesn't mean that you're above the law. In fact, in a working democracy, the rule of law means nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the law. You cannot kill somebody and get away with it. It's you know, it took 24 years to try to kill that Nathan Dunlap, and then you're just going to go around and kill that one? You know, Adam Garrity and I explained about how, why I like unions, but I do see the problem with them. Unions historically give us the weekend, the eight-hour workday, they ended child labor, uh, the health benefits, health care. They've done a lot. Worker safety, the um, OSHA standards. So they've done a lot for, you know, not just working class people, but all Americans. So the unions have lobbyists, and they are fighting. They, it's always been the unions. So historically, I think unions are important, but I've been a part of a union, and I wasn't happy with them. So I can understand that, you know, unions, they need to do something different. I don't know what to do. But um, he also said he cares about the environment. He says something about foreclosures, uh, curb police violence. He said, actually, that if a police officer breaks the law, they should get twice the punishment as the citizens. I like that. The police should have a higher threshold. There should be a higher threshold for what we expect out of our police than what we expect out of our regular citizens. But it's, uh, it's kind of like Donald Trump. For every one regulation that you pass, two are going to be repealed. So that gives you an understanding that uh, the police are going to be held to a higher standard under a Garrity administration. Under a Garrity Colorado, the police will be held to a higher standard. So good, he's not just a Nazi bootlicker. He questions things, and that's, I like that. Um, he's, when it comes to privatizing, let's see, private prisons, demilitarizing the police, he seems, I think he would be good on that because he's criticizing the police. Would he, what would he do for the homeless? He says, Colorado's got a shit ton of land. Why don't we just put the homeless on this land? There are 22 empty houses for every single homeless person that we have. For every one homeless person who's living under a bridge, cold, watching everybody with cars and houses drive right past them, hating on them, shouting shit, throwing shit at them. they got to be worried about, you know, getting fucked with by the police, getting fucked with by criminals. They have to work, you know, worry about getting fucked with by everybody. So a homeless person, for every single one of these homeless people that's out here on our streets just trying to survive, eating out of garbage cans, you know, hopefully getting a buck or two here or there from some good-natured, you know, person, um, they have to also know, you know, they don't have to, but there's 22 empty houses for every single homeless person. 22 empty houses. So that just means we don't give a shit. We're just not putting this shit together. If there's a homeless person, put that motherfucker in a house today, today, right now. There's an empty house and there's a homeless person, put those two together. You're worried about the liabilities, sign the liability away, get them in the house.